wanted to thank you for joining our webinar today titled Introducing the Headspin Audiovisual Platform. Please put any questions into the Q&A tab and we will answer them at the end of the event. Our presenters today are Aravi Gopan, Senior VP of Solutions and Ecosystems, and Ilya Dreitzer, VP of Worldwide Customer Engineering. Now to introduce our exciting new product, here is Aravi. Thank you, uh, Karen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Headspin webinar on audiovisual platform. Digital experience is equated to digital success in today's world. Everything is digital, thanks to the pandemic especially. Uh, if you are not doing exceedingly well uh, with your digital experiences, if you're not doing exceedingly well with wooing your customers on our digital channels, you probably have no business. And that's where Headspin really comes in. Headspin is a six-year-old company based in Palo Alto. Uh, we are focused on data and insights when it comes to digital experiences. We are focused on creating as many proxy end-user contexts as possible. Uh, we're backed by Google Ventures and Iconic Capital. What is Headspin? Headspin has got four parts to the product. There's a global device infrastructure, which is a bare metal infrastructure, uh, which you can access through Headspin Cloud, which is 100 plus locations across the world, which is mobile devices, desktop browsers, media devices, what have you. The second part of Headspin is open automation and integration, where we enable you to use and access Headspin in all kinds of contexts, whether it's pre-release, post-release, or as part of a product development life cycle. The third part of the product is machine learning performance and quality of experience, where we sharply focused on creating a KPI framework, which focuses on human perception as well as performance and experience. Human perception would mean in terms of how uh, using computer vision, a typical human being will perceive, let's say content and score it out in terms of mean, mean opinion score. Or this could be how a user journey, a functional user journey works across the device, across the network. And while the user journey is being exercised, how does the device and the network and other parameters behave? The last part of the platform is the most interesting part of the platform, which is where we bring it all together in terms of a PostgreSQL pipeline, the data, the analytics, the ability to tag, report trend, and what have you, where you can look at uh, everything that happens on Headspin and the machine learning models and its predictions, and then say, did my experience degrade? And if so, why? You know, what is the trend thing that I'm seeing in terms of location to location? What's the trend that I'm seeing between platforms to platforms? If an issue happened, why is it happening and why? Is it because of the application, the device, the infrastructure and whatnot? So, whole bunch of interesting use cases that questions you can ask of Headspin data and we try to answer. How do we do it? That's the most exciting part of it. This is the Headspin P box. It's a controlled environment. It's highly secure. It's got a digital lock locker. Uh, it, you know, it really maintains this highly volatile uh, mobile and digital devices in, in an environment where it functions the best way possible. Uh, it's got server units which run the entire software suite of Headspin. And from a device perspective, we don't instrument the device, we don't instrument the code, nothing of the sort. You just plug the device into the P box and it shows up on the Headspin software UI. So while this is a mechanism by which we deploy it, uh, which shows you it's highly secure, it's controlled from an ease of use perspective, it's just a software UI or if you're a programmer or a developer, which is an API that you call and can start engaging with the device infrastructure that we have. This PBOS can be deployed within a customer's premise in a completely secure fashion. Uh, so depending on the use case, you could have a completely cloud model, or you could have a completely on-premise model, or you could have a hybrid model, or you could have an on-the-go model. How has it been consumed by different stakeholders? In the pre-go-live scenarios, developers love Headspin for doing smoke testing, build validation testing. So pretty much left shift of testing before it gets into a formal testing process, the devs are able to get contextual insights in terms of the features that they develop. During the formal release testing process, 
you do functional testing, which all of us do. And then when you do the functional testing on the headspin platform using real devices, you get performance insights back. You get recommendations back. You get a composite view in terms of how your application is working in different device context, different environment context, different cloud edge context and whatnot. And then you can make corrective actions so that your application performs as expected in production and hence adoption of your application is pretty good. An important part of what we developed over the course of the last series is a regression module, which is a topic of discussion by itself, which is nothing but a comparison that we do build over build or location to location, platform to platform and what have you. So it quickly gets to the crux of the problem that you need to solve. Uh, and then you can collaborate, dev, test, SRE, DevOps can collaborate to actually solve the problem. Or you can actually use this to do synthetic monitoring in production. You can run these use cases over and over again to collect data and you get to know when experience degrades and can take action on it. Product managers love a product a lot because product managers want the product to be best in class, best in breed. If you look at some of the largest e-commerce, retail payment platforms out there, the product managers are our main customers because they love our product to sort of like see how they're doing with survey competition and what are the things they need to improve in the platform and product to become best in class from an experience standpoint. Given our core platform has been so successful, we got 80 plus customers in this area. Uh, digital natives are, um, are, are a big part of what we do. Uh, the biggest digital natives are big adopters of Headspin and hence uh, over the course of the last year, year and a half, the enterprises uh, who want to be digital natives have also started adopting Headspin in a major way. However, over the course of the last year, a few questions start coming away. One is audio, has started becoming a big input. Audio user journey, composite, complex audio user journeys where you can actually input through audio, do multi-level engagement through audio to get to an action and outcome is becoming popular. Secondly, there has been an explosion of OTT media devices and OTT media platforms. It's a lot of innovation happening in terms of media consumption and a lot of platforms being rolled out from a content uh, uh, streaming content distribution perspective. And the data supports all of this uh, anecdotal evidence that we are seeing because the market from an OTT media pers perspective has just exploded over the course of the year and it's going to continue to have, actually have a big growth over the course of the next few years. Voice assistance, chatbots, and conversational AI is mainstay uh, of our life right now and it's going to be so much more going forward. We can pretty much see a transition happening from touch and gesture and keypad in the voice as time goes by. And there has been hence a need to support these kind of use cases, audio, video consumption, a lot more consumption devices from a living room perspective. And hence it's been created the audio video platform as an augmentation to a core platform that we have. And this platform can exist independently of the core platform. It could be an augmentation to the core platform. So there's a lot of flexibility there depending on the use cases and depending on the kind of uh, platforms consuming Headspin. We set out to solve three important problems. One is support complex audio user journeys and be able to get really uh, useful experience insights and performance insights out of that in the context of device to voice user journey to network. Second is uh, support DRM use cases. Uh, in our core platform, you know, we absolutely work with DRM. So that means in our core platform, we don't have a way in which we can parse and analyze DRM content. Now using AV platform, working with DRM and without breaking DRM, we are able to parse and analyze DRM content and score the quality of that content, right? Which is super important in this OTT media world. And the third part of it is really in terms of so many devices coming out there and how do you support that, right? From a living room perspective, so many smart devices coming out there, uh, Apple TV, Fire TV, Roku TV, Chromecast, uh, Portal, Android TV, uh, TiVo, and a whole bunch of smart TV sets coming out there. So this will keep on increasing as time goes by, then how can you not be limited 
by what you can do and you be expansive and open enough so that you can support as many of these devices and use cases as possible. That has been the goal behind and vision behind the Headspin AV platform. Today, with the AV platform, Headspin supports, uh, the core platform for the AV platform, Headspin supports mobile, iOS, Android, Android variants too, uh, desktop browsers, again, bare metal, Windows, Mac machines running desktop browsers, media devices, Apple TV, Fire TV, Roku TV, Chromecast, many variants of the Android TV, uh, if you must, and all kind of, quite a few of the smart home devices like Google Assistant and whatnot. And this list will keep increasing as time goes by. And that's the goal that Headspin is a platform for ensuring success in the digital world, ensuring that your experience is best. If experience decides the success of your business, then Headspin core platform plus AV platform is the one to bet for. And all of this we've done while keeping the philosophy of Headspin intact, in, in which is easy to access, easy to use, API-based access. So folks love simulators and emulators because it's so easy to use uh, and easy to control. And our goal has to be has been to create a real world uh, infrastructure, a real world platform uh, with bare metal devices while the ease of use is the same as that of using an emulator or a simulator. Now let's talk about the use cases for the AV platform. The AV platform is already quite popular. We have three live customers for this, and two out of those three are actually the world's top voice assistant companies, right? So you don't get a better endorsement than that. And the third company is a new OTT media platform, which has got launched in Jan and already has got 10 million plus subscribers and it's got a big global vision. So we're supporting a whole bunch of use cases for them. The AV platform has now evolved to actually support a lot more than what we set out to do because it's it's fungible, it's flexible. It can address a lot of enterprise use cases too. Let me walk you through a few. The first one is device-to-device uh, -device interactions. Now, when we set out to do this, we never even thought that this would be a great use case, but this has become an emergent use case for the AV platform, which is in terms of, you know, you want to actually look at voice user journeys, any app which is voice-based, uh, using speakers, uh, how do you sort of like analyze and parse that user experience? You look at video injection, image injection, you want to look at selfie-based authentication mechanisms that you want to validate. Whole bunch of use cases around it can be opened up. Anything which is device-to-device -device interaction. We are currently talking to a customer who wants to use the setup for uh, I, you know, identity validation. Uh, another customer which wants to actually look at it for a peripheral validation. Uh, another customer who wants to look at for look at this for scanning, right? So this opens up a lot of flexibility in terms of use cases that one can uh, deploy. The second is DRM content, right? OGT media con companies and platforms have DRM content streaming on their platform. Then how do you validate DRM content uh, streaming through an iOS device, an Android device, a Fire TV, Apple TV, Roku? That's what we set to solve using the second setup that we have, which is the DRM content on mobile. Now, the same thing for media devices, Apple TV, Fire TV, setup boxes and whatnot. Um, so again, within the box, we have a setup where there's an HDMI screen and you have a high resolution camera through which you actually view the content and then you parse it, analyze it and make the recommendations. Smart home devices, I mean, this is, uh, here you can see a picture of a voice space assistant, and you can look at all the user journeys of a, a smart home assistant, uh, a device like that working with a smartphone, and how does the user journeys look like, all voice activated, right? So with this, you can see the use cases are quite a few, and uh, uh, this particular AV platform that we created, uh, you folks saw the P-Box, the AV platform that we created is audio isolated, it's optical isolator, so that means it's completely self-contained. That means when you do the voice journeys, it doesn't corrupt or pollute uh, the content. Uh, the, op the light doesn't leave, so it's fairly pretty much what streaming is what is being viewed. It's quite good fidelity in terms of the content that is being streamed. So we've taken care of not just the setup and the APIs and whatnot, but also in terms of the hardware, uh, the box itself, so that it has got 
characteristics which helps for the best case validation of these kind of use cases. With that, I will hand it over to my friend and colleague, Ilya, to show you the platform. Ilya, over to you. Thanks, Saravi. Uh, welcome again, everybody. And uh, as you listen to our webinar, please feel free to post any questions in the chat. We'll be happy to answer those later. Now, I'm going to share my screen and take you through a live demonstration of the platform and try to touch on some of the wonderful features that we have um, specifically around the use cases that Iravi so eloquently outlined for us all. So let's uh, get on with the show, shall we? So here I am inside one of Headspin's devices. Uh, this is an iOS device. It's actually a physical real iPhone XR. It's located in India. And of course we can interact with it and use it. And you'll also note that I have connected it for speaker and microphone. So one of the scenarios that we find pretty common these days is uh, anything to do with audio and video from the uh, applications. And we can support that use case very well. So for example, if we wanted to test YouTube and we wanted to actually test the um, audio assistant capabilities of it, we can do that, right? Show me dancing cats. There we go, dancing cats. Everybody loves cat videos, right? So we could do that, uh, you, as you saw, we have <laughs> microphone. If I disable the microphone here, we have the um, audio playing from this video. Download so large. we have that uh, available on our platform. And when you couple this with the AV box that Aravi just described to us all, that box is sound insulated and uh, light insulated. So we can do a lot of scenarios uh, with different permutations of this, right? Do you want to test an app on a phone or do you want to test a physical speaker like a, you know, Alexa or a Google Home? Or do you want to test a business application like a banking app that has a chat client that uses audio? In some cases, you may even be doing testing for accessibility. So you may want to do something like, uh, you know, having the device read whatever is on the screen, all of that we can support. We can also support injecting audio. So instead of me turning on the microphone and doing a manual test where I have to actually speak it, we have an API for injecting a pre-recorded sample onto the device. And that allows us to do things like uh, do testing of voice chat apps or video calling apps or, or even placing and receiving real, real phone calls. Because again, the power of using real devices is that they are real devices. So this one has a SIM card, it has a phone number. So we can use automation or manual to test across different devices all over the world. And we can do video calls and uh, obviously test video applications as well. Now, the nice thing about Headspin is not only can you exercise these test cases and identify things manually, right? So I can manually do a cat video, or I can manually do an accessibility test case. But when we record a session on that real device, we're getting all of the telemetry from the real device. So as an example, here's a, uh, a long video clip that was captured on a device in Sydney. And this clip shows the uh, NBA parade from a couple of years ago. And basically what you're looking at here is a recording that we captured on this device. So the video was playing on the device and we captured the video and we analyzed it. And as Yeravi mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, you know, we have developed our own video quality mean opinion scoring algorithm, which is what you see on this time series here. And that is based off of a, uh, a manually trained AI algorithm that was fed a lot of opinion scores on a lot of different video content and it correlated it to things that are physical indicators that we can get from the video. So blurriness, blockiness, contrast, brightness, colorfulness, a few other things over here. So we can have this arbitrary way of scoring the video. And of course, if you do this multiple times, you can basically aggregate that data and look for things like what's the maximum or minimum mean opinion score? How long was the mean opinion score less than three or anything along those lines? And so you can really start getting this uh, you know, quality of the video. But in the case of mobile devices, we can also capture from the device things like the CPU usage or the memory usage. So if you have anything on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device, we have all this additional telemetry that not only applies to the video use case, but also applies in general to just anything. And as you saw with the example of using the 
device, uh, for example, to run YouTube, you know, from our product, it's very simple to capture these sessions. Now you can do this as part of an automation script that runs, you know, many times a day, or maybe it's an automation script that triggers based on a, uh, a new build being committed to your CI CD platform. But even manually, you can go in here and you can ask to record a session, which is what we're doing here. And then we'll be able to actually go in and uh, record the, uh, you know, let's say in this case, we'll record YouTube. So once the recording kicks in, we'll be able to, uh, you know, we'll go into YouTube and basically um, play a video. We can, you know, rotate the device or, or do anything else with the device um, that would allow us to create a session, which we can then analyze and look at. Now, another thing that we have, I'll just let that run in the background. Another thing that we've spent some time on is integrating various kinds of OTT devices into the platform. So if you have, uh, say, an Amazon Fire Stick, you know, you can access that Amazon Fire Stick directly from the platform. And as long as the content is not DRM protected, you can basically use it. So this is great for, you know, functional testing. This is great for um, evaluating uh, competitor products or looking at the performance of, you know, your app against somebody else's video app, or just doing the basic functional and performance validation that you could do on a video uh, platform. So again, if you, you know, if we don't go to YouTube on, um, say a fire stick, you know, we can do that. And again, we can record a session here as well and, um, <clears throat> you know, gather data that way. So there are certain, um, there are certain platforms that we support directly on our platform. And that includes the fire stick. It includes various Android TV devices, the newest Chromecast with uh, a Google TV, um, which I can show you in a moment. It includes uh, Apple TV as well, including the latest Apple, uh, you know, 4k TV, and most of this can be driven directly with automation, either with traditional Appium type automation or really any third party framework that you might want to use. And, you know, we, we do have some excellent partners that we work with. So if any of you want to reach out and discuss automation of OTT media more, you know, we're happy to um, discuss how we can do it and how we can leverage partners to uh, maybe provide a better overall solution. So that's an excellent topic of conversation. Uh, the other thing, as I mentioned, is uh, newer devices. So something like an NVIDIA Shield or a Google Chromecast with the uh, uh, Google TV, right? So these are all things that we can put in the platform. And see, in fact, you know, what we can do is, uh, for example, we can start both of these devices and actually put them in um, side by side. So we'll have an NVIDIA Shield next to the latest Chromecast, you know, so we can maybe expand the screen of the Shield, expand the screen of the Chromecast and uh, you know here we can basically um, do the same thing right and we can look at how your application might uh, you know display and render on a uh, say an Nvidia shield device versus a, a Google Chromecast for example right so if we go to YouTube here we can do the same thing um, or obviously we can install different applications on both devices and have this nice side-by-side -side comparison as well so we can um, we can do that as well now, not every device can appear on our platform. And as Ravi mentioned earlier, you know, we do run into the DRM question once in a while. And so of course, DRM protects the video programmatically using encryption. So it blocks any attempts to read it off the HDMI port. It would be illegal to break DRM. So we are not doing that, but that's why one of the reasons why we introduced the AV box. And as Ravi mentioned with the AV box, the idea is we have a physical camera device looking at a physical screen, then we can plug something into that screen or we can place a tablet or a uh, iPhone or an Android device. And that could be the source of the video. So when it comes to watching and uh, you know, obviously navigating with DRM content, uh, you know, that is something that we can, we can do here. Um, so this is an example of the AV box setup. So this oh, Roku device no over here is actually running on, uh, this is a physical Roku device. It's plugged into an actual screen. And with this controller, I can actually control that. And basically, uh, you know, we can go in here and again, we can record a session, we can capture audio. So we can go in and, uh, you know, look at a, um, you know, a demo or we can do a search or whatever you want to do. And we're not limited to a Roku, right? This is just a, a sample here. But the idea is whether it's a Roku device or a, uh, you know, a tablet or some other uh, device that outputs video, uh, we've had some great success looking at automating things on a PlayStation or an Xbox 
Um, so video gaming systems to some extent can be supported here if they have companion apps like Xbox three, uh, sorry, Xbox one and the new Xbox, as well as the PS four and five, um, other gaming systems may be possible as well. Um, so really it gives us a lot of flexibility and that AV box generic concept. It's great because it goes into a standard data center rack. So we can put it into, uh, you know, any data center. And as you saw, we have many locations across the world where we have data centers, so if you want to, you know, test the newest release of your app in Brazil, for example, or Canada, or if you're in Brazil and you want to test on a device in the United States or in London or anywhere in the world, right? We have um, various uh, data centers where we can place these AV boxes. And what the AV boxes allow us to do is test not only video applications with or without DRM, but also other things. For example, if you are a company that makes a two-way uh, calling application, video calling app, then you can use the AV box to test injecting video that would go into the device camera, which would then actually show up as the source of video on a video call. And that could be measured with the MOS score as well. So we can create an automated system for testing audio calls, video calls. We can look at the quality of the audio versus video um, on different devices, um, potentially other kinds of devices as well. And we can also work with devices that are not video necessarily, but assistance, right? So something like a Nest or a Google Home or any new devices that are coming out in any new market that may want to test using synthetic testing, you know, on real devices, what uh, that looks like. And so that iPhone was recording that YouTube clip for us for a while. And so now you'll see, you know, this is um, going to obviously take a few minutes to analyze, but we've captured, you know, five minutes of this um, video clip that I'm still waiting to, uh, you know, analyze. So we'll come back to that one and we'll see what we captured there. Um, meanwhile, the last thing that I want to touch on is just the ability to use um, the devices in any country to do this kind of testing using various kinds of automation. Now, when it comes to traditional mobile testing, you know, Appium is sort of uh, a very well-known accepted, uh, you know, uh, a framework, it's open source. Uh, Headspin, we love open source, so we actually contribute to the Appium open source project. And so any of our devices is always plugged into an Appium endpoint, um, Appium server. And it's very easy to take an Appium test, whether you're writing it for a Fire Stick uh, for video content, or you're just doing traditional Appium development for the device. Um, you know, it's very easy to do. <clears throat> and we can do this on a device by device level, or we can have a load balance config where I can target my tests against all the devices available to me and they'll run in parallel, right? But many of our customers use other frameworks um, to, you know, to deploy their testing and we are fairly framework agnostic. And so we will pretty much work with anyone um, in terms of testing. So for mobile apps, it could be something like Android uh, Espresso, right? Or XCUI test for um, iOS. For video applications, uh, there are some great partners that we have, uh, you know, there's uh, um, one in particular that I'd love to talk about um, if anybody is interested in doing some testing for video content or video devices. Uh, they have a different approach to testing that has some, um, you know, excellent capabilities that when combined with the AV box, for example, would be an excellent solution. So if anyone has video applications, uh, you know, we would love to take that offline. Um, would love to uh, spend some more time on this with anyone there. And so the last thing that I want to look at is this uh, video um, that we've captured earlier. And uh, you know, this is uh, five, almost six minutes of video. So it will take some time for the uh, MOS algorithms. As you see, they're not yet coming in, um, but when they do, we'll be able to show you that. And um, you know, we can go back to this one and use it here. So basically just wrapping this up, any of our platform, whether it's the AV box or a physical device or an OTT media device or a set-top box or anything that either can be plugged into our platform directly or plugged into an HDMI screen, we can capture, we can analyze, we can have this you know, video quality mean opinion score, we can have blurriness and blockiness and all sorts of other things. So any video application, whether that's you know, a movie studio or a streaming app for news or even uh, like I mentioned earlier, placing and receiving video calls, any of that is something that can be measured and automated. And <clears throat> when you do that at scale, you can identify changes, you can identify you know, big data analysis to see if the average MOS score, for example, is increasing given the same video clip is playing or any number of reasons, uh, sorry, of any number of applications around measuring the content of video. 
And the driving of that content can be either manual, as I've shown you here, or we can use various automation, either something like Appium based or <clears throat> one of our you know, other solutions to do that. So that's the end of the live demo. Uh, again, please, by all means, put in any questions that you might have into the chat. <clears throat> we would love to answer them. And I'm going to turn it back over to my friend and colleague, Irvi, who will just close this out. And uh, then we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending our webinar. Thank you, Ilya. Appreciate that. Hopefully, everyone, you got a good perspective on the product and the platform. As you can see, all the core capabilities of Edspin uh, is intact. And on top of it, we added a lot more to support the voice use cases as well as the media use cases and the media devices. Uh, we would, would love to hear your feedback and suggestions and ideas in terms of how to use it. Uh, with your customers uh, or for any use cases you might have. Uh, to sum it up, right, Headspin now has a core platform, which is what we call the Headspin P box. Uh, then we have the AV box, which you can see below here, which is the optical isolated, audio isolated box with various configurations possible to devices, media devices, smart home devices, what have you, right? And all of this, we've kept it to industry standards in terms of being rackable, uh, and stackable in a data center so that, you know, this is all you know, very easy to use, uh, very easy to deploy, um, is highly secure, adheres to all kinds of industry standards so that it can work in large enterprises just like it works with the Intel natives. Um, so we've taken care and been thoughtful about ensuring that, um, you know, uh, it's easy to use at the same time it complies with what any large enterprises and platform companies would need. And as always with Headspin, uh, with the AV box too, you get the flexibility of deploying it completely on-premise within a customer's network, completely isolated if you must, or it could be in Headspin's premises or Headspin's data centers, which is what we call the cloud. It could be hybrid, both put together with a single pane to manage, uh, which allows you to run certain use cases in production, certain use cases, the pre-release, depending on how you want to do it. Um, and the value of, uh, the fact that, you know, even if you do within a network, the full power of the platform is with you and your team across the world can work on the Headspin platform to accomplish the goals that you have. And the other part of it is, of course, on the go that, you know, these platforms can be powered in uh, given uh, given network and you can, you can do drive test or you can do test on the move uh, as might apply to you. So with that, time for Q and A. Thank you guys for your presentation. Let's see, see a couple of questions that came in. Um, can Headspin identify quality issues such as screen freezes or buffering? Yes, uh, that's an excellent question. We, we didn't cover that. Uh, so Headspin has uh, different kinds of AI models that are looking for specific things in each of these recorded sessions that we looked at. So uh, for example, um, screen freeze is something that we can detect uh, pretty easily. We have a generic issue called a loading animation, which basically identifies spinners or loading dialogues of any kind. And when it comes to video, that correlates very well to buffering events. So when you're watching a video and then um, you have uh, like a you know a buffering spinner that shows up for some number of time, you know we can capture that. And there are other um, things that we can do from either the network layer or from the um, the session screen data itself to identify issues. So yes, that's a common use case for us. Okay, great. And you had mentioned uh, video apps. Um, there was a question that came in. Can you compare performance of our own video app to other video apps? Yes, that is a, a use case that we see from time to time. So as you see, with our devices, because they're real devices and the apps are not modified in any way, it becomes possible to capture sessions of any video app on the devices and then basically look at any differences or any you know, key scenarios. Uh, so if you wanted to focus on something like say the search time or the loading time of the video, 
you can easily um, perform that action by simply capturing video sessions across these different applications on our devices and then correlate that to whatever uh, functional or non-functional metrics you may want to see. Great, and I see someone is asking, can you use this for testing mobile games? Yes, uh, gaming we covered a little bit. Uh, basically, um, there's a, a slew of different uh, mobile games that we can test on the devices themselves. So again, we can uh, capture all of the relevant metrics from the mobile devices. So CPU and memory usage and uh, frame rate, uh, battery drain, you know, these are all very important metrics for games, but also either manually or using automation, you can, you can actually play the game on the platform while recording that uh, head spin session and then basically analyzing it. So it's useful for functional testing of the games manually. It's also something that can be automated with various uh, open source frameworks or other products around um, game automation. So like Alt Unity Tester, for example. Also, I did mention earlier, we use, you know, we have some success with testing on say PlayStation or Xbox. So those are a different kind of uh, gaming that we can test not on mobile, but on, uh, you know, traditional gaming platforms. And that's a very exciting new thing for us as well. Excellent question. Thank you. Great. And someone is asking, does this work with voice assistant apps and also physical devices such as Alexa or Google Home? Yes. Uh, so we have, let me think. Um, the, the first thing I showed was kind of easy, right? That's basically any app assistant, like Alexa has an app and you can put it on an iPhone and use it. So that is very easy. As I mentioned earlier, we can actually inject audio and then capture the responses and compare them to expected responses. So things like that are uh, pretty easy to test with our platform and uh, we can do that. But when it comes to physical devices, that's exactly why we built that AV box that Irvi was showing you in the, uh, in the diagrams because it's a sound isolated box. And so we could put in a phone or a couple of devices and we can also put in any physical speaker and we can actually capture, you know, we can actually speak to it verbally, right? Uh, by injecting audio that gets played by the phone or by one of the devices in the box and the speaker picks it up and whatever response it gives can be captured in a head spin session. And so, yes, we can um, do testing of physical devices that have a, a voice interface and we can also test applications that use a voice interface. Great. And let's see, I see a couple more questions in here. Um, I see a couple of Q and A questions coming in in some different place here. So um, disabling Wi-Fi connections. So this is something that we can do because the the way we control the device is completely separate from the way the device actually contacts the outside world. So when I want to bring up an iPhone and uh, use the iPhone, I'm interacting with it through a completely different interface that has nothing to do with Wi-Fi or SIM card on the device. So we could put our, our devices into airplane mode we can disable Wi-Fi, we can switch Wi-Fi, we can turn on this, you know, the, the 4G radio, for example, or 5G radio, or turn it off and turn on Wi-Fi. So anything that you can do with a real device, you can do on our devices, either using Appium or using the actual user interface. And it works just fine because the communication to the device itself is through a completely different channel that's not affected when you, for example, put the device into airplane mode. So we do not have these uh, types of problems in our system. The other question that came in is, uh, you know, in the demo, we showed different locations or devices. So if you um, connect a device via USB port inside the, one of these P-boxes, um, are all the P-boxes interconnected? So basically, um, yes. So we, our architecture is very modular in that way. And it's also a very flat architecture. So there's basically one central point, which we call a unified controller, and it talks to every single host and a P box is a host. And actually a P box can have three hosts or an AV box could have, you know, one host. So basically different configurations have different number of host machines but all the devices are connected to those host machines. So if you have uh, you know, many different countries and each country has one P-Box, 
you can basically set them up to, to connect to a single unified controller. And that's what you see in the user interface. So just like in my demo, I had all these different areas in India, in China, in Hong Kong, in you know, the US and the UK and Finland and Europe. I mean, we have over 70 countries at this point where we have a data center presence. All of them can show up on one UI. We also have, of course, the on-premise option. So if somebody wants to buy three P-boxes and put them in three different cities or three different countries, they could be completely isolated if that's what you want, or they could actually be connected to a single unified controller, and that way they can all show up in one place. So we support all of that. I hope I answered the, these questions. Um, the last one in particular, if that's not what you meant, please uh, you know, let us know, or we're happy to take that offline. Okay. Well, this uh, session was recorded and we will send out the recording to everyone who's joined us today. And we thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you next time.